side, apparently this side over here thought I didn't put my deodorant on. But <laughs> I noticed there's a lot more on one side. But I'm just kidding with you. It is good to see everybody today as we come to worship the Lord and to start seeing our uh, sanctuary beginning to fill back up again. So it is so great to have y'all and everybody that is joining in on live stream. A few announcements I want to quickly remind you of. We have our charge conference one week from tomorrow night. Charge conference is where we uh, set the leadership and everything for the following year. Uh, but then right as that part won't take long, then we're going to have a leadership team meeting. Now, why am I telling you all that? Well, in the Methodist church, if you are a member of the church and you are part of the leadership team, you get voice and vote. But if you are a member but not on the leadership team, you still can come, find out what's going on in your church, and have voice, like decisions that the leadership team's about to make. You can say, hey, I'd like to suggest that we do so-and-so. So I want you to be aware of that. It's, that's the way we operate in the Methodist Church. Also, Wednesday, we're starting Bible study back on the book of Genesis. It will be held in the fellowship hall at 10 o'clock in the morning and then at 6.30. I'm going to have the tables set up so that there will be social distancing for everybody that wants to come in person. But if you choose not to come, you can also do the Zoom method. You just need to let me know, uh, let Gina know, so I can send you an invite and I'll have it situated so that you can participate with your brothers and sisters uh, in Christ. Also, I hope everybody got your communion elements. And also, we have been making... Um, bulletins available again uh, because we know some of you may not uh, do internet so I wanted you to have a copy of that so those are just a few things that I wanted to quickly mention to you before we begin worship unless anybody else has anything else we need to share together well again it's great to see everybody uh, some of you are venturing back for the first time today and so we're glad to have you too so let's pray together to begin our service Almighty and holy God, we just ask that by your precious Holy Spirit, you will fill this room and fill our hearts. Help us to worship you with a joy that is in our hearts. Lord, in a minute we're about to sing a song that is an old, old, awesome praise song of oh, a thousand tongues to sing. And Lord, let us sing it from the joy that lives in us to worship the living God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Let us now join together, follow the words up above on the wall or on your screen, to owe for a thousand tongues to sing. him.
one quick thing I want to share that I shared in the first service. You know that before COVID hit, we always had something in our service where we passed the offering plate as a way of uh, people being able to support the ministries of the church. And, and since COVID has struck, we've not been able to do that. Just a reminder that we have set up boxes that you can place your offerings in as you come in or as you leave. And I just wanted to take a moment to thank all of you who support the ministry of this church. Uh, you know, it does take money to operate a church, bills that, that have to be paid. Uh, plus, we are involved in ministry through our connection apportionment system. So I want to thank all of you that, that give faithfully to the church. Also, would like to ask if you would, uh, tomorrow at 11 o'clock, to please lift up your pastor. I have done two very difficult funerals in my life. Uh, and that one for my grandmother, Dowdy, and the other for my grandmother, Durham. And tomorrow will be another a real tough one for me. Uh, as my great friend from not all the way back to 1996, um, Johnny Jordan passed away. And I'll be doing his funeral in, in Childersburg tomorrow. So I would appreciate your prayer. I, I know that I know that I know. Because this guy loved to sing and pray, play his guitar for Jesus. And I was texted his wife this morning. We're good friends too. And I said, I know good and well. He is praising his Lord even as we speak. So, but it's still hard. As you all know, when you have loved ones pass away, uh, it's still hard. So I'd appreciate your prayers. Uh, then I'll mo make a time in the, in the worship service itself in the prayer. Uh, for you to lift up any prayer concerns that you have. So let's go to the Lord in the prayer together. Oh Lord, we just come before you and thank you for this beautiful, beautiful Sunday you have given us to worship you. Lord, being able to come on a day like this and hear the birds singing and have a, a cool morning as we see the seasons begin to change, it just reminds us of the mighty God that you are. For Lord, you formed all of everything we see. This earth, the heavens, and even ourselves. By speaking it into creation. And Lord, you gave us such a gift in the way you made our world. For Lord, we get to enjoy the different seasons. And though I know, I personally thank you for summer. But God, I especially thank you for fall. And as a cool breeze comes in, we begin to just feel alive and we notice the differences you make in our lives. Father, this morning we come before you to ask you to help us to look deeply into our hearts. We're, I know we're going to do this in a little while in communion, Lord, but look into us. Show us the things that need to change. Show us the things that where we've hurt other people with our words or actions. And help us, Lord, to not only sincerely repent, but to be better. Lord, challenge us to do what Chuck told us to do last week about getting out of the boat. And to being deliberate about serving you. God, this morning we continue to pray for our nation. For, Lord, it is in desperate need of your intervention. But, God, on this World Communion Sunday, we also play, pray for our entire world, Father. For you created every human being. And yet, sometimes we act as if there was different creators. We forget that Christians that live in South Africa or Britain or Canada are our brothers and sisters because we share the same Lord, the same Creator, and the same Spirit. And so forgive us when we have caused division. God, we pray for our president this morning. Lord, I pray for healing for him. And God, I want to pray for forgiveness and change of heart for those that have said things like, I hope he dies. But Father, that just shows the condition our country is. Because Lord whether we agree. With our leaders or not. We should still respect, respect them. 
And God, bring our nation back to civility again. God, I pray for Johnny and Kay, Johnny and Kay and Jacqueline and their family. The Lord, Johnny's got to enjoy being with you, but Kay and Jacqueline are still here on earth. And so I pray that you will strengthen them. But God, I know there are other prayer concerns that need to be lifted up this morning. And so I ask that you hear the prayers of my brothers and sisters. Any others? Yes. Father, thank you so much for the faithful prayers of my brothers and sisters and for the concern they have for others. For we know you hear the prayers when they lift them up. Now, God, I just pray that you will guide us through the rest of this service so it will be pleasing to you. Lord, be with Gavin as he's about to bring a wonderful song to us. We thank you so much for him and for Gloria and for Jennifer for helping us through this difficult time. And God, I pray that it gets time for me to stand up and preach to your people that you will hide me behind the cross. The people will hear your words and not mine. In Jesus' name we pray. He was pierced for our transgressions He was crushed for our sins Punishment that brought us peace Was upon Him And by His wounds And by His wounds we are healed transgressions he was crushed for our sins the punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds and by his wounds we are healed we are healed by your sacrifice
praise God that through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we are redeemed. You know, one of the saddest things that I think that happens is when relationships end. Whether it be between friends who've been friends for years and one speaks a word that the other one doesn't like and so the friendship ends. Or whether it's uh, husband and wife. Whether it's groups of people that separate and never uh, are close again. And sadly, the church is not immune to this either. We all may remember years ago when what was called the worship wars in, in the churches. And I bet y'all went through it here. When you got ready to begin your contemporary service, there was a struggle between traditional and contemporary. And there's been other divisions. There's divisions over theology where, for example, um, there one divide that happened was between uh, John Wesley and a guy named George Whitfield, between whether you're pre predestined to go to heaven or whether it's free will. There has been a big division, especially lately, over biblical interpretation. Is what the Bible says true? Did it really happen? If God says sin is sin, is it really sin? Or is it open to other interpretations? Then, even in the church, there's been arguments over what's the purpose of the church. Is the purpose of the church to lead people to the saving grace of Jesus Christ? Or is it just to make sure they're fed and clothed? Or is it both? These are just some of the issues that the United Methodist Church will be facing in 2021. As the great showdown is headed toward us. On whether or not we will remain a single denomination or become two. But folks, I bet none of us here today can say that you've ever seen our entire country as divided as it is right now. This past Tuesday night was a fiasco, in my opinion, on both parties' sake. But you know what? We all want to jump on them, but it's really just indicative of what's happening in our country. When civility is being thrown out the window and we become divided. And folks, even though this church gets along great, we've been struggling with it since March. Oh my gosh, have I ever heard it? Pastor D. What do you mean we're having outside worship? It's too hot. It's too cold. We want to be inside. No, we don't want to be inside. I have heard it left and right, folks. So it happens in the church. Or it's even happened, uh, you know, people are getting to the point where if you're a Republican and you're a Democrat and you've been friends all these years, but now all of a sudden it's heating up so much, that they're not hardly even talking. Or in my circle of, of friendships and relationships, because I'm what's called a traditionist orthodox preacher who believes the Bible is true and I preach from it, versus the progressive liberals who have a different interpretation. Well, it's getting to where we're not even speaking to each other anymore. People I've been friends with with years won't even talk to them anymore. But I'm sure this never happened in the New Testament, right? Everybody after Jesus came and went and the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost, they always got along perfectly, right? Uh, not quite. Jennifer is fixing to share us a story that lets us know that even in the early church, they had some struggles too. Jennifer? <clears throat> Scripture reading today is from Acts 15, 36 through 41. After some time, Paul said to Barnabas, Let's return to each city where we previously preached the word of the Lord to see how the new believers are getting along. Barnabas agreed and wanted to take along John Mark. But Paul disagreed strongly, 
since John Mark had deserted them in Pophelia and had not shared in their work. Their disagreement over this was so sharp that they separated. Barnabas took John Mark with him and sailed for Cyprus. Paul chose Silas, and the believers sent them off, entrusting them to the Lord's grace. So they traveled throughout Syria and Cilicia to strengthen the churches there. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Y'all remember as we've been working our way through Acts... <clears throat> That Barnabas was the very guy that introduced Paul to the rest of the apostles because they were scared of him. Barnabas is the very guy who went on this first big missionary journey with Paul. And yet, they get into such a disagreement. The Greek word that's translated is very sharp. You could basically say, <clears throat> it didn't involve fist fight, but it was basically a knockdown drag out as we would have called it here in the South. So what was it that caused this great division between them? Now, I admit, I am an admirer of the Apostle Paul. I love what he writes in his epistles and how much he is the, just the, the gem that he has given us to understand why Jesus came, for what way Paul wrote about it. But in this particular case... I got to admit, I'm a little bit, uh, a little bit disappointed in Paul, because <clears throat> Paul is so prolific about writing and preaching about grace, but yet he's not quite ready to extend it to John Mark. Remember, we talked about a couple of weeks ago, P, B, and J, Paul, Barnabas, and John Mark. Well, you know, John Mark deserted them on their last missionary journey, so. They're ready to go back and check on these churches they've been to see. And Barnabas says, well, let's, let's give John Mark another chance at it. And Paul's like, you have got to be kidding me. This guy deserted us. Well, man, they get in such a big argument that these two long-term friends split up and go separately. Basically, they both wanted their own way and were unwilling to compromise. Does that sound familiar, church? Haven't we all struggled with that a bit lately? We want what we want, and we want it the way we want it. And if we don't get it, we take our marbles and go home. You know, that's an old analogy. I don't play marbles anymore to y'all. But you know what I'm saying. Both of them were convinced they were right and the communication must have broke down. And to me, it's sad to hear about them splitting up because it just reminds us that even born-again, spirit-filled Christians can still mess up at times because of the human nature that's still in us. And when you really think about it, it boils down to, even though you can be forgiven and reconciled to God, that sin nature, you're forgiven of sin, but that sin nature, that fleshly nature is still in us. And we struggle with it. And so they struggled it with it here. And when you think about it, it is, so you can really say their division was caused by sin. And if you really want to look at what's causing the problems in our country, it all boils down. You can, you can boil it down to one side wanting one thing, one another. But if you really boil it down to the very center problem, it is sin. We let the flesh take over as Christians, and the world that doesn't even know Jesus lets the flesh rule them. And so we have all these problems. For example, uh, the whole prejudice issue, and it's not just a black-white thing. I mean, it can be, well, I'm from the United States, so I'm a better than a, Can I'm a, better than a Canadian, or a Canadian can think, well, I'm more sophisticated from those people in South Alabama. You see what I'm saying? 
It's this internal sinful nature that, we, that causes us to look down on each other. And so that's why we got problems in our globe, you know, around the world and even here in the United States. Because we forget that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. None of us are better than another person. So, I've named this sermon, and you can see if you can see it very well, because I know the lighting, but that's supposed to be a canyon. And I named the sermon The Great Divide for a reason. <clears throat> There's a big division that happens here in the New Testament, but there was a bigger division that happened eons before that. The division between a holy God and created humanity. And we've talked about this before, but it needs to be reiterated. When Adam and Eve chose to listen to the lie of Satan and, and disobeyed, this huge divide opened up between holy God and all of humanity. And that is the biggest great divide. But what was the result of this divide? I want to go back to the one between Paul and Barnabas for a minute. Obviously, we don't even hear uh, much about Barnabas anymore. But, but in a way, their great divide was good and bad. Now, how could it be good, you may say? Well, one thing it did do is it allowed two groups to form. And one went this way to preach in the name of Jesus. And one and went another way to preach in the name of Jesus. And, you know, it's proof that God can use us despite our failures for his glory my gosh think about how many churches that you have heard of in your time that have split over this issue or over that issue one of the first big splits between the catholic church and protestant right and it, and it sounds sad and it's bad when we when we don't get along and there is splits but the point is, God used it to reach another group of people. For example, if we were at the Protestant Reformation, what if everybody had stayed Lutheran? Or everybody had stayed Baptist? Would, uh, or Methodist? Would the, one group be able to reach people as well? So God uses these things sometimes for his glory. We Methodists may reach people in one way for God. A Baptist may reach uh, another group for God that maybe we might not ever be able to do if we were all one thing. So sometimes it can be a good thing. But then I want you to think about this. I mentioned about this great divide between God and humanity. How could that possibly be good? The divide itself is not good. But the choice that God gave humanity was good. We have to remember that God created us with free will. That we could choose to love God or disobey and, and turn away from God. And apparently for God, that free will choice meant so much for us to be able to willingly love him that he allowed for the fact that there might be a great divide. And sure enough, there was. So what was, or how was this division healed? How was this great divide bridged? Well, when you go back to, uh, to Paul and uh, Barnabas and John Mark, I can't really say for sure about whether or not Barnabas and Paul ever made up. Nothing in scripture says they did. But I can tell you that reconciliation forgiveness is what healed the relationship between Paul and John Mark. The one that wrote the book of Mark. How do I know that? How do I know that there was reconciliation? In 2 Timothy we hear Paul writing to Timothy and he says this. Only Luke is with me. But, Mark, but bring Mark with you when you come. 
for he will be helpful to me. Paul forgave John Mark for deserting him. And John Mark forgave Paul for not letting him come. And they will forgave each other and reconcile. And folks, that also spills over to this great divide. That when we feel of, see this great divide that was so big, so enormous, that no matter how good people thought they were, how wonderful they thought they would, they never could get over to God by themselves. Because God is high and holy and perfect and we're sinful. So what did God do? How did he build a bridge over that great divide? He built it with the shape of a cross. When his son died on the cross for us. So that we might be reconciled to our living God and be forgiven forever. And folks, that is the greatest reconciliation that's ever happened. But I tell you this, and I believe it in my heart, and I know we can't make the world do it, but I truly believe if people would learn to let go and let God have his way, if they would learn to love and know each other through Jesus Christ, we would see this division disappear. Because Satan is using this in our world and especially the United States to drive a wedge to make us hate one another. And hate is not of Jesus. God's greatest desire is that we live in peace with God and for us to live in peace with one another. So, as we come to World Communion Sunday... What I love about today is we take communion every month. But World Communion Sunday adds a little extra. Because we're reminded that all Christian churches around the globe that are choosing to participate in this today. We're saying that we believe Jesus died for us. That his blood was shed for us. That the same Holy Spirit that lives in us in this room is the same Holy Spirit that lives in a church in Africa. And that we come together. So, this morning, I'm going to ask you to clearly and very clearly hear this invitation. I took this invitation from the older Methodist hymnal and revised the words just a bit. But I want you to hear very closely what it says before we have the prayer of confession. So listen closely firstly to the invitation. I don't think y'all even have that part printed. You that truly and earnestly repent of your sin, who desire to live in peace and love with others, who intend to live a new life following the commands of God and walking in his ways. Let us draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament for your comfort and make your humble confession before God. Will you now join me in the prayer of confession and pardon? Almighty and merciful God, we, you know the thoughts of our hearts. We confess that we have sinned against you and done evil in your sight. We have transgressed your laws and disregarded your sacraments. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Give us grace and power to put away all hurtful things that being delivered from the bondage of sin, we may bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. And from henceforth may ever walk in your holy ways. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Apostle Paul asks us, tells us in, the, in 1 Corinthians, that we should examine our hearts before we come to the Lord's table. Although it's open to all, that we should still in that examine our hearts. And I always do this, but I want to challenge y'all while I challenge the first service. I'm going to be quiet a minute and move over to the table. I've already had my time. But I want you to close your eyes and allow the Holy Spirit
to show you things in your life that aren't as they should be. And at that, that point, when he shows you things, whether it's attitudes, whether it's words you've said, thoughts you've said, things that you know are not Christ-like, when he makes that aware to you, admit it. Say, you're right, Lord, I've done that. And I ask for your forgiveness. And I ask you to help me never do that again. So while I'm stepping over here, everybody close your eyes and just in this moment, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart. Bible tells us that if we confess our sin to the Lord and we repent of that sin that he is faithful and just to forgive, to forgive us of sin therefore if you've done that this morning I can proclaim you are forgiven thanks be to God will you join me now with a great thanksgiving the Lord be with you Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You, you made from your one every nation and people that live on the face of the earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. He commissioned us to be witnesses to the very ends of the earth and to make disciples of all nations. And today, his family in all the world is joining in his holy table. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when, this, when this supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remember of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Oh God, as the pastor of this church, I ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts from the field and the vine to make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Renew our commu communion with your church throughout the world and strengthen it in every nation and among every people. To witness faithfully in your name. By your spirit. Make us one with Christ. One with each other. And one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory. And we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All God, or honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of little children, let us pray together the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I know that it's when we take communion in the way that we're having to take it since COVID, that it doesn't quite feel the same. We don't have the same kind of bread and the juice tastes a little different and even these wafers feel a little different in our mouths. But the main thing we're doing is that, that what they remind us of. They remind us that the Son of God took on flesh and that he allowed that flesh to be crucified on the cross. And he reminds us that it was his blood, the holy blood of the, of the Son of God that was shed for us on Calvary. And so I ask you to please peel up the top portion and take out your wafer. And join with me as I say. You can take off your mask. This is the body of Christ given for me. This is the body of Christ given for me. And now, if you will peel off the bottom part for your juice. And join me in saying, this is the blood of Christ shed for me. This is the blood of Christ shed for me. Let us pray. Lord, this is so different from what we've been used to all these years of the way that we do communion. And we know that it's probably very different from the way you did it, Jesus, when you first started all those years ago. But I know you understand that we are doing the best we can because we want to remember, we want to honor that great sacrifice for us. And we know, Lord, that as we partake of Holy Communion, we are, we are fed spiritually. So that we might go out from this place and be spiritually revived. To get out of the boat. To share the good news of Jesus. To be peacemakers. And so, Lord, grant that we will do that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll now sing together, One Bread, One Body.
dismiss the way we do, but it is done just to help keep with the COVID standard and protect you. So I'm going to ask if this inside group here would please stand and leave first. Y'all welcome to greet each other outside. We can social distance, but this is just a way to try to keep the social distancing going well. And Marie, you and Becky can go ahead also. Okay, the people on the far side would please leave out that door next, please. because I figured y'all needed church more. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding with y'all. Y'all welcome to go now too. Have a blessed day.